Hello everybody, I'm Mold at West, and this is Shadows Over Loathing once again. In the last episode, we went into the train car here and fought that railroad bull on our quest to find more gas for the bus. And we've already got more than enough gas, but I want more than more than enough. I also found a class ring that you might be interested in, Elias. Hey, Elias. What can I do for ya? Found me this... Well, also the Scarecrow. I, uh, had to beat up your Scarecrow. Sorry. Well, I was leaving it behind anyhow, but why'd you go and do a thing like that? It shot at me. With a gun. Oh, oh, right. Yeah, that's perfectly reasonable then. Yeah, and there's also that ring that you have... You have to be collecting those. I found this old class ring. I hand him... I hand it to him and he looks it over. Hey, this is a 17 SIT ring. I got one of these in faux, em faux emerald, but it's not a faux sapphire one like this. These are the ones they give to the junior varsity pig skinners. Had a little enchantment on them so the kids wouldn't, wouldn't get quite so many concussions. Probably worn off by now. Is it worth anything? No, not to a jeweler or pawnbroker or anything like that. Eight carat gold and them stone made of glass. A collector would give you 30 meat for it, such as myself, if you're interested in selling it. Sure, 30 meat. That's good for me. He fishes some meat out of his pocket and his overalls and hands it to you. Pleasure doing business with you. Well, all right. That ring didn't have any benefits of equipping it anyway. It's a weird plaque where Lydia was standing. Oh, right, I forgot about her. Historic site. At this exact spot on the 13th of October, 1908, the state's first mass-produced automobile, a Ford Model T, purchased by Hiram O. Crollins, accidentally struck and killed the state's first hitchhiker, Lydia Barnsley. So apparently that woman you talked to a few minutes ago has been dead for exactly 20 years. Good. Swell. Everything's about this is great, and you aren't regretting this trip before you've even arrived. Fine. I'll go on about my normal non-haunted day. I didn't... I didn't... Wait, wait. What, Lydia? There was no Lydia. And that is a door I didn't want to go into. There is a bit of gasoline in this, but it ain't got no hose. This one's full of water, this one's empty. If I can find me a hose, I'll be able to extract even more gas. And then this gas can right here that's 166% full will end up being 200% full. Hey, there's that turtle. Hmm, this turtle seems to be heading to Ocean City too. At this rate, it might beat you there. You're coming with me, turtle. And your name... Well, the default is Turt, but I ain't going with that. You ain't Turt. You are... You're going to be... Shurgle... Turg. That is who you are, and there we go. You got an item. Shurgle Turg the Turtle. Anyway, there's you with the gas. I still need a hose if I'm going to be getting that little bit of the extra gas we need. And then that guy will be able to make two whole trips between fucking Ocean City and wherever the hell we started from. But where would I find me a hose? That I do not know. This desk presumably optimized for doing gasoline-related business. Search it. Four of the drawers contain nothing but old receipts and pencil stubs. The fifth one is locked. All right, I think I did that before. I didn't want to go out the damn door! And no. Look for a fuse. Yeah, I could use a fuse. There was a fuse box that didn't have a usable fuse in it. So we'll just fuse this thing on up click done big tool chest all the good ones were stolen that much i remember i can't mysticality that press the thing and there we go car goes lowers the car is missing its gas tank but there is still a big glass of gasoline in the cup holder sure i'll put that in my can 200 percent full gas can there's nothing else of interest in the car there's also no interest for a year if you'd like to buy it 
I would not suit yourself, but yeah, I ain't buying no beat-up, run-down car. If I want a car, I'd buy one that's even more beat-up and even more run-down. And I need mysticality if I'm gonna go doing that. Do I have anything that would give me mysticality? Well, that gives me one, and that, would, that wouldn't be enough. And unlocked advanced trick shoot techniques. I think I tried this and I wasn't able to do it. Yeah, I'm I'm not smart enough to read. Damn. If only I had some more stuff. Yeah, let's unpack my luggage here. You shouldn't unpack your bag in a greasy garage. I'll unpack wherever I damn well please. What about this room? Can I unpack here? Shouldn't unpack at a dirty gas station. Why are you telling me where I should and shouldn't be unpacking? Yeah, I know it's a dirty gas station. Fine, I'll do it out here. But, oh, it'll get all wet, am I right? If you open your things in the rain, your stuff will get wet. I fucking knew it. Fine, I'll do it under here, under the fucking awning of the gas station. Yeah. We ain't even in the rain. We're sheltered by the fucking awning thingy. Anyway, I'd probably get a hose out of that thing if I had the mysticality, but I just don't have it. And you know, I don't think I went and talked to that hobo about beating Railroad Bull guy. Now, let's see here. Uh, howdy, howdy. Howdy, Garpot. What gonna do for you? Well, I dealt with that Railroad Bull for you. You did? Well, now that's a real service to the hobo community. I ain't got anything to offer but you as a reward, but I surely won't forget this. Yeah, no problem. Well, that... that didn't... That didn't pay off as I had hoped it would. Anyway, yeah, we got the gas out of this thing. Was there something else I could do back here? Newfangled at indoor outdoor refrigerator, nothing else in there. Yeah, I already got that. Yeah, and I, I don't think there's any way I can get up my mysticality enough. There's Howie's knapsack. Sure, let's ask about it. Is this knapsack your only luggage? Oh, that ain't mine. That's been here since before I arrived myself. Nobody's been able to f work out how to open the dang thing. If you can figure out the trick, you're welcome to it. You inspect the bag. It appears to be latched shut with one of those puzzles made out of bent nails and steel wire. Howie wasn't just harmonica-ing harmonica Dixie. And I ain't got the moxie for that. Damn. Maybe even that's got a hose in it. I've already went and made my choice to build my muscle instead of other things. So I guess that's the road I'm on. Garpot Fudrose got two cans worth of gas crammed into one gas can. And sure, that'll be enough, though we could probably get even 300% worth of gas in there, but we got enough. Let's get up on out of here. Hey there, friend. Any luck with the gas? You showed the driver your gas can. Well, his gas can. Well, huh. This can doesn't usually hold that much gas. Not sure how you did that. Well, whatever. You ready to hit the road? Yeah, I think I done all I can do. I just ain't got the moxie or mysticality to go doing other shit. And I can't find nothing to beef up those other stats. Well, let's move on along. He takes the can and empties it into the bus's tank. And with that, we're on our way. All aboard! You climb back on the bus and return to your seat. And soon you're dozing off to the sound of rain spatter spattering on the window beside you. Unfortunately, it's barely an approximation of sleep. The sort of sleep that you slip into so gradually you don't even know you're asleep until something wakes you up. Plunk it straight! And you realize that your meandering thoughts of the past few minutes have been utterly strange, shadow shadowy tendrils of whispering ideas. Hey kid, this is your stop, right? That are all that are now totally forgotten. Ugh. Yeah. Thanks for making me forget my dreams, dude. You're an asshole. Ugh. Blah. All ashore. What's going ashore? Thanks for traveling, Willis Busco. Well, here we are. Cola Wars surplus. Murray's antiques. Army surplus store is closed for the night. Makes sense. Yep, that is a bus stop. Lamp. Yep. Sale, sale, sale. Going out of business. Good for you. Going seems inaccurate. Yeah, they've been out of business for quite some time. Ooh, trash. What's in the trash? Cheap cologne. Does that do anything? Well, I, I can 
good eyesight. I could also up my wit, my mo mysticality and moxie, but... Anyway, cheap clone, where are you? There you are. Increases my stench armor. That's nice. This bottle of cologne was inexpensive to begin with, and throwing it away didn't make it any more valuable. So... I take it that's a temporary buff, and I'll hold off on using that until I get somewhere where I would could use some stench armor. The bell over the door jangles as you walk into Murray's Antiques. The young woman at the counter looks up as you enter. Oh, hi, you must be Garpot. We don't get many customers at this time of night, or really at all, or at all really. That's me. You were expecting me. Yeah, Murray didn't say much about you. He gave me the letter in the mail. My name's Jessica. Oh, jeez, you're soaking wet. Come in and I'll get you a towel. You walk over to the counter, trying not to drip on any vintage bric-a-brac as Jessica s grabs a threadbare towel from, b from a shelf and pulls the tag off before tossing it to you. Thanks, is Uncle Murray here? His letter wasn't very specific. He isn't. You said that in kind of an ominous way. Where is he? I wish I knew. He had a line on another artifact and said it was going to be a tough one. I told him he should get some backup, but he wasn't willing to wait. He just wrote that letter and told me to mail it if he d didn't come back. Is there something I'm missing here? Is there an an This is an antique shop, right? You make, you make trying to talk great Aunt Ruthie into selling her mother's Chesterfield sound like a deadly spy mission. Yeah, this is gonna take some explaining but well, we do gotta help him my big heart attests to that jessica leads you into the back room furnished with some desks and some strange looking machinery welcome to our back office the hub of our little operation i'm guessing by operation you're talking about something other than antiques well, yes and no. See, a few years ago, Murray found out that there's a bunch of antiques circulating that are, well, hinky would be a real understatement. Hinky? What the fuck does hinky even mean? I need to look this up now. Hinky? Dishonest or suspect? He knew the guy was hinky. Well, that is a word I didn't know existed. Murray called them tainted, dark magic, real bad mojo, you know, cursed. Are you serious? This, it's no joke. That's what our real job is here. The antique store is just, well, not exactly a front. We find a lot of regular antiques, too, and selling them keeps us in scratch, but really we're trying to hunt down all these evil doodads and neutralize them so nobody gets hurt. And Uncle Murray went out to get one and never came back. That's long and short of it, yep. What do you say, are you in? Absolutely, I'm always up for a crazy adventure. Wouldn't have much of a game if I wasn't doing some crazy adventure and shit. Great! You hear the shop door opening after a moment. A goblin pokes her head into the office. Hello? Oh, hey, that's swell timing. Hey, Gabby Murray's sister's kid showed up to come meet him. Well, I, hi, Gabby. I'm pleased to meet you. Hi, hello. The pleasure's all Gabby's. Gabby, would, would you be a dear and carry his luggage to Murray's room and grab some blankets and stuff out of the cupboard? He can't sleep till we find Murray. He can sleep there till we find Murray. You've gotten it. Gabby picks up your suitcase and carries it through a door in the back of the room. All right, I'll use me some sleep. Which of these is the back door? This is your new bedroom, apparently. You can hear Gabby bustling around in there, making the bed and z making the bed and such. Oh shit! I just realized I didn't beat that dust devil back there. Not that I could. I didn't have enough muscle. You wonder where this door leads? Find out. You open the door. And there's just a brick wall behind it. Apparently, it goes nowhere. Damn. What about the cat? What's the cat's name? Calliope. Murray got her a couple years ago. Scritch behind the ears. But she doesn't react at all. Why doesn't Calliope like me? Eh, she'll warm up eventually. Try giving her some sardines. She loves those. Do you have any sardines? No, we're all out. You can get some more tomorrow. They have them at the Cola War surplus store next door. Well, alright. That's a radio. 
That's, uh, I can't even hazard a guess as to what this contraption does. You don't have time to play games right now. That's what you think! There's nobody at this desk. Whose desk is this? Charles Wallace, our handyman. He's fixing a leak on the roof right now, but he'll be back later tonight. Okay, I'm sure he'll be back by the time I'm awakened from my slumber. It's o'clock. This is a desk, too. That's Murray's. I keep nagging him at some, to straighten it up before someone bumps into it and we have to call the National Guard to dig them out of the avalanche with curse-proof shovels and a squad of exorcists handy. Anyway, best not to mess with it. Will do. I mean, won't. Yeah, you won't. Anyway, bedroom. Hang on a sec. You can't go to sleep yet. I'm pretty sure I can. I bet I could do it right here while I'm standing, still standing up. Ah, well, I hate to spring this on you, but there's something we need you to do before the night's over. Well, anything for Uncle Murray, I guess. You know those cursed artifacts I was talking about? Since info on them is so sketchy, we've been working on a machine that can detect them with radio waves. I call it the Detectatron 1000. We've just gotten it up and running since Murray left, and it turned out there's a tainted thing practically right on our doorstep. Huh, that doesn't sound good. Yeah, it's not great. I was gonna have Gabby go get it, but that's why she came over tonight, but since you turned up out of the blue... I guess there's no time like the present. I am probably not exaggerating when I say there is literally no time except for the present. What? As in, there might not be a future. You won't have to go far. You won't have far to go. It's just down the other end of the block, if the readings are right. There's a newspaper office that got shut down earlier this year. It should be in there. Well, Gabby will go with you. She's good in a fight. A fight? Aw, oh, jeez. Yeah, well, hopefully it won't come to that, but you never know. Hey, Gabby! Gabby reappears with an expectant grin. Go to the newspaper office with Garplot and help him get that hat, okay? Okay, Gabby is ready for an action. Let's mosey. Well, excited sigh. <sighs> all right, fine. You said that's a hat, a cursed hat. According to the readout, yeah, a men's fedora, probably. And I'm supposed to, what, just break in and take it? Well, not exactly break in. I managed to finagle a spare key out of the guy at the realtor's office. I'm pretty sure that still counts as breaking and entering. You'll be in and out and back here in bed before you know it. Well, okay, then. That's Gabby. Come on, Gabby, we gotta go to the newspaper place, which is probably this way, but it might be the other way. The Ocean City Watchful Eye. That sounds like a newspaper place. Well, in we go. You take a deep breath and unlock the door. You give the key to Gabby for safekeeping. Somehow I think that's a bad idea. Now, there's a hat in here. Whoever worked at this desk forgot their cufflinks. Sure, reporter's cufflinks. There's a pink slip on the desk. Read it. Hinden, I'm not paying you to publish cockamamie conspiracy theories. In fact, I'm not paying you at all anymore. Clean out your desk and hit the road. Grover Burgess, Editor-in-Chief. P.S. Do you like the word cockamamie that I used up there? It's a slang term I coined. It means ridiculous or implausible. I think it's really gonna catch on. Well, you were kind of right at that. Anyway, there's a half-finished letter in the typewriter. What's it say? The letter leads... Reginald, I think Burgess is onto us. We've gotten careless. In fact, maybe I shouldn't be typing this out as a letter instead of just talking to you in person. Why am I doing this? Meet me under the water cooler this afternoon. Ah, crap. Here comes Burgess with a pink slip. Sincerely, blank. It doesn't say who it's from. The writer must have gotten fired before they could type their name. Also, under the water cooler? What's that all about? I don't know. We'll find that out. There's a fucking arcane press that's... Neat? Since when do the fucking newspapers use magic and shit? Second edition of Principa Mathematica published, we still cannot understand a word of this, say local children. Severe storm causes trolley disaster, prevents five other trolley disasters. Par Parisi Parisian bards declare independence, claim debauched tavern as sovereign city-state. We're just getting some fucking high fantasy news right there. But anyway, I'm all out of time for this episode. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching. And I hope to see you again in the next one. God. Bye.